most of it, like this is a tea set, and that is like a little uh, mat, and um, this client came and we had tea with Buddha one day in what's called the Wasak Festival, which is the day that Buddha reached enlightenment, the full moon in May. And we did a ceremony and we read from one of his books called the Dhammapada. Um, that's how I got that. Um, a lot of the stuff I, like some of that gold stuff, we'll talk about that, that stuff I got from India. This was when I was working on balance and I was working with Vishnu that I told you about. He's all about balance. This is Ganesh. Ganesh is like the Elewa, yeah. El Abre Camino. Yeah. Um, there's a cool story about Ganesh because he has an elephant head and his father actually chopped off his head. So that's why I wanted you guys to watch that American Gods because you'll realize that this isn't about God. This is about gods. These are gods. A Pluto god of of Betrayal is just as much a god as a god of compassion. We know people that a god is their money. And we know people that, you know, a god for them could be their car yeah. or sex. Yeah. So this idea of god is distorted. It's god. And we give things god qualities. And that's what that show is so good at depicting. The, I didn't read the books, but the, the, the person who did the show is amazing. Um, a lot of these I got as gifts from clients. Um, like Athena, I was working with Athena on strategy for a while back. So it depends on what I've been personally working on in my practice or in my life. Um, these are some cards from an artist that I bought. This is Merlin. Um, she does beautiful work. Here's Jesus. Um, this is Artemis. Um, this is Guinevere. The Kalima is from the Hindu tradition. She's the one there that's stepping on Shiva. She's the one um, with the hand. This is She's Mary Magdalene. This is the one with the, from the hand right now. You're supposed to like. The, there's something from the Hindu that's a uh, la mano and whatever like. The Hamsa? They, they no, have, that's have, Kalima, have, yeah. is like the god, goddess of like, she's the goddess of destruction. Mm -hmm. This is Ignana, this is the one that my book, the mythology that my book is written so after. Yeah. This is Morgan, she's from the Celtic and the Pagan, and if you've ever seen the runes, oh, yeah, seen she's that. got the runes on her arm. And I actually have the runes here. here. The runes is another divination tool. So that's another thing. Every mythology has a divination tool. So you could take out a tool, get a message. So it's just like the oracle. But just like every single oracle had positive, it had negative. It was a tragedy. So Marcia said earlier that she does the tarot and nothing ever came true and no, whatever, no. whatever. I used to because that's what my so, mom did. Yeah, and that's part of our culture and that's part of the Hispanic thing. But the problem with that is that there is a human being who is reading and interpreting that. And they're interpreting it through their own story and their own myth and their own filter and their own family their own beliefs. So it isn't pure. That's why you have to be very careful. Okay? So let's just, that'll be there we're, as long as it doesn't get taken out of the classroom. <coughs> it'll be there for as ever long. And if not, then I'll bring it down to my office. Um, so I want to talk about shame. So we'll lock the door. I want you to take that sheet of paper. And I need you to get very, very, very honest. We're not bullshitting. We're going to get down and dirty with ourselves right now. I was actually thinking about taking this to the new apartment. Oh, so okay. Maybe good. that's why they fell. Yeah, so. Okay, good. But I don't know. Until I move, I can stay here. So I need quiet. Quiet, quiet, quiet. 
Okay. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to connect with yourself. Every single one of us is ashamed about something or many things. Okay? And I want you to write your deepest, darkest, scummiest, most shameful, crappiest thing that you think of yourself or that you've done or that you believe about yourself. Just take your time and write it. You don't hold back. We write this with our eyes closed? No, no, no. I'm just saying, sometimes we need to like connect to our core to get really honest and write it on your paper. So we're gonna leave our monkeys here, and then if Friday I decide to have a place to put them, Once you have that, I want you to now, below that, write what you do to counteract it. So if you hate animals, you open an animal shelter. So I want you to write your zero to your hundred. Because if there's something about yourself that you hate or that you're shameful for, you must do something to try to hide it and counteract it. It may not be so obvious if it doesn't come up, just think about it, that's fine. Okay? So, if you hate animals, you open the animal shelter. If you're racist, you open a not-for-profit for, you know, low-income, racially, you know, underprivileged. Those are extremes, I'm just giving the example. It might be something you do subtly. I'll give you an example. You're racist and then you're like, oh, but I have a black friend. That's the main thing that you always hear from people. But you know, so it doesn't have to, I mean, but that's a way. It doesn't have to be like this big thing, but there's something. Remember, we balance the system, remember? I told you about the system. The people that say, oh, I don't have a problem with gays, but because my friend is gay and you know, like, you okay, must so. balance the system, or try. So if this is your shame, you balance the system. <laughs> and if, it's, if you can't identify shame, just something you don't like about yourself, something that you try to hide, something just, you would never want broadcasted on the news about yourself. I just put myself, but don't I gotta explain it? <laughs> okay, so shame, and then what we write under it? How you try to cover it. Trying to do something about it, <laughs> but they really don't. <laughs> right, because it's fake. I marked the page. Let's hope I didn't. Okay, so this is a book. I've told you about this. It's why people, why good people do bad things. Okay, I'm gonna read some of the ones that these people in this workshop did. My shame is that I'm a dirty, flirtatious slut, and I cover this up by dressing conservatively, shutting down sexually, and keeping men at a distance. My shame is that I'm a lesbian who doesn't belong. 
I cover this up by being funny, having lots of friends, and always being the life of the party. My shame is that I am insensitive and uncaring. I cover it up by being charming, a great listener, and attentive to everyone's needs. My shame is that I'm not good enough, smart enough, or pretty enough, and I cover it up by pretending to be perfect. I have the perfect kids, the perfect house, and the perfect job. My shame is that I'm damaged, a loser. I cover it up by being a corporate trainer and motivational speaker. My shame is that I'm weak, powerless, and dirty. I cover it up by looking everyone in the eyes and making them feel like a million dollars. My shame is that I'm as insane as my alcoholic brother. I cover it up by being a financial powerhouse and keeping all my affairs in impeccable order. My shame is that I'm scared to death of men. I cover it up by shamelessly exposing myself wearing low-cut sexy clothes and bright red lipstick. My shame is that I have disdain for most people, and I cover it up by being involved, caring leader in my community. My shame is that I'm a cold-hearted bitch, and I cover it up by being exceptionally warm, loving, and personal. My shame is that I'm a pathological liar, and I cover it up by talking to everyone about the importance of honor and integrity. My shame is that I live off my parents' wealth, and I cover it up by pretending to be successful and claiming to own my own multi-million dollar business. My shame is that I am an unwanted reject, and I cover it up by always being in a relationship. My shame is that I'm a bigot, and I cover it up by befriending people of every race and color and inviting them into my home. Brene Brown, I've talked to you about her before, she does a lot of research on shame. And shame has come up a lot for me as I've done my own shadow work because the more and more and more you get into your layers, the more you have to get to what I call the seed, the seed or the root of the origin. That's why when I work with clients and I ask about their childhood or I ask about the state of the mind of the parents at conception or pregnancy, I get an idea of what the shame is. So, um, I've had to really look at shame very closely, especially in the past few days. So, I've told you about needs. Do you remember the needs? Food? No. Um, oh, protection? Protection? Um, security and our safety? one in our particular society. Do you remember what I told you that validation needs come out as in our life? The addictions. Not the addictions, but movement. Oh. So when people are anxious or they jitter or they need to climb the corporate ladder or they have to drink coffee, Part of what psychologically is happening, and it goes back to the archetype of the warrior, of Mars, of movement, I have to be doing in order to be of worth. This is something very Western, 
okay, very, very Western. Unless we are doing, we usually are not of worth. And I had to really look at this because I'm a doer. I am a person who is constantly doing, and creating, taking a class, or writing something, or blog, or this, or that. My whole life, I've been this warrior. And the past few months have been exceptionally hard for me, where I have lost any semblance of my identity. Like, I don't know what my beliefs are anymore. I don't know anything. Like, I have to sometimes question if, if I even want to be alive. Like, I mean, I'm in a major existential crisis right now. So when I got my diagnosis, I had to question, you know, okay, I didn't do it, quote unquote, right the first time. I didn't do the, the treatments as, as as were prescribed and now, you know, I'll do all of it and, and whatnot. But yesterday when I got home from the hospital, I was crying and I really had to get to this point of shame. And if my whole thing is movement and doing and creating, and whether it's hustling or making money or writing something or teaching a class or, or, or I'm always in, Go, go, go. Anyone who says, I can't even tell you how many people last night were like, you're a warrior. I'm like, no. That has been. What you've done your whole life. Well, it's actually the hundred, right? Yeah, she can do it. This is, it's what she, this is her time to relax. You need a, a breather. You need to so, this is going to be your rebirth. I had to really look at the other side of it. And I got to this point where I was like, I create nothing. I have no identity. I have no worth. I'm nobody. I was not wanted in, create, in, in, in creation story, in origin story, right? And the level of worthlessness that and I'm a Pisces that has been hidden behind the doing. So the warrior has been hiding and hiding and hiding the validation needs, the moving, the going, the going, the going, even in my birth story that I told you there was no time for anesthesia. I'm coming out of my mother. I fell. They caught me. I was from the second I popped out, I was going, 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 going. I was trying to reject the level of worthlessness that there is at the core of the shame of my existence, of my being. We need to get very honest with ourselves about this so that we then can have rebirths. This is the depths and the depths of the shadow. So in the Ignana myth, I shared it with you, right? No, that's corny. Here she is. Okay, so let's just read what this says. Inanna, star of heaven and earth. I haven't read this in a really long time. This is an artist. Her name is Jo Jason. Um, one of my students from my old school told me about her. I mean, she's amazing things. Um, but I don't remember what it says. But let's read it, and then I'll tell you why that's the, the myth and, and how I finally got to here. Inanna, the name given to the exalted and prominent ancient Sumerian goddess, so it's a Sumerian myth, of love, war, sexuality, and fertility. Ishtar was her Akkadian name given by the first ancient Semitic civilization of the Mesopotamian some 4,000 years ago. The name can be translated as lady or goddess of the sky. 
Her famous temple in the city of Uruk was called the House of Heaven. One of the many aspects she was perceived is that of the star Venus to be seen rising in the east in the morning and descending into the darkness in the west at night. The great Babylonian, Phoenician, and Greek goddess Ishtar, Astarte, and Aphrodite are all latter names and incarnations of Inanna. So you see how the story morphs from all of the different mythologies. So she's the Venus, which is my little <coughs> Venus in the... And ironically, this is Mars. So the antidote, so to speak, is the Venus. And my whole part of, big part of my story has been this thing that I've been like this man, that I've had to be a man, that I've had to be a man. And that's what I, one of the reasons I didn't want to chop off my breasts. So yesterday when I was like, okay, I guess I'm fucked. And this one, I'm just going to have to be a man. I mean, <laughs> it's just like there's nothing else to do because the fact is the feminine, so to speak. Obviously, I know it's not from the physical, it's from the internal, but nonetheless. Associated with protection in battle, war, fertility, and prosperity. She was also <coughs> an embodiment of the potency of feminine beauty, love, and sacred sexuality. Amongst her many myths and stories, and this is the one that goes to my book, the most well-known and reconstructed is that of her descent into the underworld. So, seven gates, She's here in heaven, and her sister calls her and says, hey, bitch, my husband just died. Come on down. <coughs> and Inanna says, OK, be right there. Damn it, these fucking family functions. I hate this shit. I'm the queen of heaven. I better look good. She gets all dolled up, and she puts her gold cuffs, and she puts her beautiful gagati on her long gown, and she gets to the first gate. And what happens? The god of the gate opens up and says, I'll take that, bitch. And she goes to the next. They take her cuffs. Third, they take her shoes. In the fourth, they take her dress. Not a third, I'm going to go on In the, you be going back up? I'm going back up. Okay, amen, sister. Most people don't even go to the third. Most people stay, if at all, at the first gate. Fuck that. You're going to take away my safety, my security, you're going to see me for what I really am. I call this fofo, fear of being found out. I'm going to let you know that I feel like a worthless piece of shit. I'm going to let you know that I'm bad in bed. I'm going to let you know that I'm fucking irresponsible. I'm going to let you know that I don't know jack shit and I'm a big fraud. Fuck that. See ya, sister. Can't make it. Sorry, I'm co I have a cold. My son is sick. Oops, got into a car accident. And we lie, and we lie, and we lie, and we lie. Who are we always lying to? Ourselves. Ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ourselves. Yeah. Because we don't want to fucking see our fucking cellulite ass. Because <laughs> that's next. They're taking her bra and her underwear next. You don't want to see it jiggle.
and she hangs her on a butcher's hook. Just wait, the sister that went through all these levels for? Oh hell. <laughs> <laughs> I done did all this. And you want grateful? Oh man. I did all this and you need to be ungrateful? Yeah. Because we feel entitled. We're entitled to what people? Family. What are we entitled to? What the best family? class at Harvard. I told you the number one class at Harvard was the happiness fucking class. We're goddamn entitled to happiness. But what did I tell you every mythology is? A tragedy. A fucking tragedy. But Tanisha's like, fuck that. I'm getting out of my house away from my auntie and I am gonna get tragedy. Oh, hell no. <laughs> so she stays at level three, which is great. And that's right, she comes in today, I look hot, I'm gonna be narcissist, and I'm gonna own it, and we're good. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Hell, stay anywhere. Go somewhere, though. Yeah. Go down one of the levels. If we can at least get down somewhere, remember, this is all the shadow. This is our fofo. We're in good shape. Because it's awareness of something. But most people stay here in the lies. And what are one of the ones that we loved? Which was your favorite? You dirty slut. My shame is that I'm a dirty, flirtatious slut. And I cover this up by dressing conservatively, shutting down sexually, and keeping men at a distance. She tortured her husband. No, not that. <laughs> She's torturing. She tortured her husband. No. Okay. But she stayed here. Because she'd be like, hell no, I'm going down there. So not only do we not want to go down to our shadow, if we do get down here, uh, entitled, surprise me, give me gifts, look how great I am. And what does life give you? A big sack of shit. <laughs> and it says, fuck you, here's cancer. Have a nice fucking life. Your husband's walking out on you. Your kids are moving to college. This morning I was talking to the IT guy and I said I have to postpone our appointment. I have cancer and I need to organize my life. I said, but I'm going to refer you to someone else. And he's like, anything else? I said, yeah, I'm moving this weekend. Anything else? I said, yeah, I'm getting divorced on Wednesday. He goes, anything else? I said, yeah. Then I'm sending my kids off to college. I said, I, I can get you an appointment maybe after surgery in October. <laughs> what? That's how I get you your surgery? No, I don't know. Oh. Oh. So, we feel like, so here I, God Francis, who did her work, I went to my shadow, and what was I given? I was hung on the fucking butcher's hook. I live this story and I'm shocked that I'm hung on the butcher's hook. Fuck no, people. But this is a wake. Yeah. Of course. This is a wake. Yes. Meaning you must go over there because if not, you're going to live in life. Exactly. You're going to live with your exactly. Eyes. And that is why so few people. I'm going to me. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. This is why so few people will go down and say, take it, and take it, and take it. Because they don't want to see the cellulite jiggle. They don't want to look in the mirror and say, my shame is that I'm damaged, a loser, and I cover it up by being a corporate trainer and motivational speaker. We don't want to get there. So we stay where it's comfortable, in relationships that are comfortable, in jobs that are comfortable, in lives that are lies. But what is comfortable? Exactly. 
This is the problem. Why and that's problem? each person's sort of definition. Yeah. Usually it goes back to the family mythology that we just talked about because we have our little corporate card. I belong to that family. Exactly. I'm going to repeat the shit of the family. Exactly. And I'm not going to go down.